Barcelona for MWC. We get to go to Tokyo for SeaTac. We get to go to Los Angeles for E3. And of course, we get to go to Las Vegas every year for the big one, the International CES. In each of these events, we try to present the news in such a way that it feels like you've come along with the ride. We do our best to get every little bit of news out of these events, make you feel like you're there with us. But I will be honest, it's never quite as good as being there for yourself. And that is why we're here. We want to create an event for you, the readers, to feel like you are at an actual event because we're actually at an actual event. Over the course of the next two days, there will be multiple products unveiled up on stage which have not been seen anywhere in the world before. There will be multiple announcements up on stage here too. Lots of things to get excited about. You'll be in the room when it happens. And the first one happens actually right now. This is the Z-Board. And if you've seen our CES coverage in the past, you might have actually seen me write this in the podcast in the past before. But this is a new special edition that Z-Board is launching here for the first time. It is called the San Francisco edition. It's got a bigger battery pack. It's got bigger wheels. And it's got a very uh, appropriate king shop here. Orange and black. Any giant space in the house? This is, uh, well, we can read our hands on with that right it's about now, I think. But more importantly, you can get your own hands on. This will be on the show floor later. You can try it out yourself if you want to uh, strap the helmet on. Probably a good idea. And we will have lots of other cool stuff out there for you to try it as well. So that's the whole idea. You guys can enjoy this experience yourselves. And we also have a ton of giveaways coming up in the next couple of days. And that actually starts right now as well. We're going to give away the Seaboard. I want to very much like it. I can find the raffle bowl. One second here. Podium. Aha! Technical difficulties. All right. Now, when you came in, if you're eligible for a giveaway, you should go see the tickets. Uh, and there's going to be a number on that ticket. And I uh, just want to find that ticket right now because I'm going to read out a number. If this number matches, then you get to take away this fine Z board. Everybody ready? The number is 745711. If that's you, go to registration later. I'll take your information, and you will be the first winner at our first expand event. Now, beyond uh, product announcements and that sort of thing at events, another big part of the experience is talking with other people, talking with CEOs, talking with people who make the products, and of course, talking with other journalists about all the excitement, all the news that's happening. And so, we wanted to bring that to you as well. But over the course of the next two days, there's going to be an amazing selection of people up here on stage. We'll be talking about things that they're passionate about, talking about things that you're passionate about too. I don't think it's the things I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. We have an amazing person to help us kick things off not too bad. today. Not too drunk. Show. Now, you can't talk about the history of the Z board without talking about another company. You can't talk about the Wii game console without talking about another company. And you can't talk about a couple of smartwatches that's also on the show floor without talking about another company. That, of course, is Kickstarter. Crowdfunding has absolutely revolutionized the way that people can launch products. No longer, if you have a good idea, do you need to go sell your soul to venture capital, or uh, beg, borrow, and steal money from your friends and family, or get a third or fourth mortgage on your house. You can now go out and target the people who are most important to you, the consumers. Every day, hundreds of creative individuals, musicians, documentary filmmakers, uh, comedians, comic book artists, and yes, gadget lovers too, Go on to Kickstarter and shake your hands, launch their product out to the world, and see if people out there are as excited about it as they are. And of course, at the forefront of that crowdfunding revolution is Kickstarter, and that is why I'm incredibly excited to introduce to you this morning co founder of Kickstarter, Yancy Strickland. Thanks for coming out this morning. My name is Yancy. It's nice to meet you all. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Kickstarter, some of the things that are happening through it, uh, answer maybe some of the questions you may have about, about how it's going. Um, so Kickstarter uh, is almost four years old. April 28th will be our birthday. Um, and since then, it's grown fairly steadily. Um, if I get the presentation up on the screen, that would be great. So in the past four years, over three and a half million people have backed the project on Kickstarter, pledging over a half a billion dollars. Um, these are to films, to albums, to books, um, to pieces of technology, to plays, to dance performances, to all creative things. And this money is going to just regular people, people like you and I, who are just looking to make something. 
Uh, and you can see of that half a billion dollars has been pledged, over $400 million of it has been collected. As you probably know, funding on Kickstarter is all or nothing. You either uh, meet your funding goal and get your cash, or no money at all changes hands. So a, a very significant portion of the money uh, ends, up being, ends up being successful. Uh, over 90,000 projects have launched. 44% of them have been successfully funded. Uh, interestingly, the success rate has been very consistent over time. It was the success rate for the first few months of the site. It's always been the same. So there's some sort of, I don't know, magic highlight number to that. Um, it's been very consistent over the past four years. Uh, all of these numbers that I just showed are actually publicly available. We have a, a page on the site, Kickstarter slash help slash stats, that has live statistics for pretty much everything that we track. Uh, anytime we deploy code, this page updates. You can see info on successful projects, unsuccessful projects. You can drill down into categories. Uh, we really think of Kickstarter as being an experiment. You know, it's an idea that we had that we thought maybe would work, um, and we're still trying to learn from it. So this this page is our attempt to share the things that we're seeing with everyone else to see what we can what we can learn together. And if you open up this page and, and pull out your calculator, you can see things like 89% of all the money that's pledged ends up going to successfully funded projects. This is interesting. The success rate of projects overall is 44%, but almost 90% of the money goes to successful projects. So projects either really make their goal or they don't. There's not a lot in between. And this sort of speaks well of the all or nothing format. There's this vetting that's happening. People really think things are awesome or they don't. You see that if a project reaches 20% of its funding goal, it's eventually funded 82% of the time. And you can see if it reaches 60% of its funding goal, it's almost always successfully funded. So there's lots of stuff to be learned from that page. And, you know, if you like numbers and data, I encourage you to dig in and see what you can turn up. Um, you know, Kickstarter is uh, available everywhere, and here in San Francisco has been one of the biggest hubs for it. You can see $52 million has been pledged to projects here in San Francisco, so 10% of all the money that's been pledged. Um, and those projects have encompassed just about everything. And last night, actually, I, I went to have dinner uh, at a restaurant here on the Mission called AQ that did a Kickstarter project to open. Um, it was really, really good. You should go and you should have the chow. It was ridiculous. Uh, but, you know, this is a restaurant that was started here in San Francisco. And as I was walking to the restaurant, no lie, some guy with Revo lights on his bikes rides by. I'm like, this is, this is a Kickstarter culture right here. Uh, that's been a lot of what we've been seeing happen over the past, over the past year, is that these projects being made through Kickstarter are starting to appear in the culture around us. Uh, and about a month or two ago, we did a big feature, a year in review of things that happened through Kickstarter in 2012. And it was a look back at just things that existed, things that had come to pass that had begun on Kickstarter. And there are things like 10% of the films at the Sundance Film Festival raised money on Kickstarter. That was also true this year. Cards Against Humanity, which maybe some of you have played, was created on Kickstarter. Top the Amazon charts every time it was available. There was a Kickstarter-funded opera that premiered at the Kennedy Center. Publishers Weekly called Kickstarter the second biggest publisher of graphic novels in the world. There was the Making Making. There were journalism projects all over the world. Journalists from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Christian Science Monitor, raising money directly from the public to cover things that the Red River is more interested in. Amanda Palmer raised over a million dollars and maybe in the Billboard Top 10. And 63 movies opened in theaters last year that raised money on Kickstarter. It's been over 100 so far. So these things that are starting on this platform, starting with someone just sharing their idea with their community, seeing what people think, they're filtering up, they're, they're passing through the gatekeepers, and they're managing to be recognized as works of art on their own. It happened in an especially big way just a couple of weeks ago. This is a short film called Innocente that raised money on Kickstarter last year, over $50,000. A couple weeks ago, they won an Academy Award for Best Documentary Short. Amazing, amazing. This past week, there's a project from Veronica Mars. You may have seen this one. People are excited, yes. Uh, so this raised you know, $2.5 million in a couple days, and now everyone's debating what it is that that means. Um, but again, this is just the power of people putting ideas in the world, other people having the opportunity to interact with them. And these things are breaking out of just this, not just this internet space, they're, they're being all around us. Um, you see with something like the Oculus Rift, this was a, a really cool project about a year ago, a virtual reality headset that I unfortunately have yet to play with, but everyone seems to think is going to change the world. You know, that showing up on Jimmy Fountain and it, it blowing his mind. So these projects are continuing to just filter out and filter out and filter out. Um, but of course, this is, a, this is a conference about gadgets and technology. 
If you look at hardware projects specifically, um, here's what you see. There have been 4,000 hardware projects that have launched on Kickstarter, and 34% of them have been successfully funded, so a little bit less uh, than the overall funding rate. And collectively, uh, they've seen over $109 million pledged and over $91 million successfully funded. You can see 84% of those funds have been collected. It's a little bit lower, again, than the overall site average, but lots of things, lots of things have happened to you here. It all started with this project. This is a project by two guys, Dan and Tom, started a little design studio called Studio Neat. And they had been uh, 3D printing with, with Shapeways, making this little, this little iPhone tripod stand that they thought would be pretty cool. At the time this project launched, in September 2010, that was about a year and a half after Kickstarter launched, it was the first Apple-related project ever on Kickstarter. And uh, as you can see, it did really well. It raised $130,000 out of no one. This is a really, really good story. Uh, right before the glyph, the largest, the largest design product on Kickstarter had been this. A vending machine for seed bombs. You could throw these, these little balls on the ground and they would just plant trees. This was the largest design project before the glyph. But the glyph really changed the game. and brought product designers into Kickstarter and introduced Kickstarter to the world of product design. And shortly after the glyph came the TikTok. Uh, this was a project by Scott Wilson, who was formerly at Nike and done a lot of, a lot of good projects before. And he had this idea to turn a, a nano into a wristwatch. This project went crazy, went crazy. In six weeks, it raised almost a million dollars, turned everyone's head. And even more incredibly, uh, this project launched in October, and he was fully, he had all of his, all of his TikTok sent out to all backers by Christmas. So in 90 days, we from launching the project to fulfilling it. This is a guy who managed the global supply chain for Nike before, so he, he really knew what he was doing. Um, but this really set a new bar for how Kickstarter could be used in this kind of space. And you saw things like the twines came from some MIT students, a really creative thing. You can see their goal was $35,000. They ended up with over half a million dollars. So these things were getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and more and more eyeballs are coming to see these things, thanks to places like Engadget. And then a, a little over a year ago, you had Elevation Dock, which is the first project to break a million dollars on Kickstarter. Uh, this is an aluminum, aluminum cast dock for an iPhone. Uh, it, it raised a million dollars in one day in February. Just a couple hours later, another project raised a million dollars in the first two days hours of each other. But that kicked it up another level, and then of course there was the Pebble, uh, which still stands as the largest Kickstarter project by, by Mount Pledge. And you know this, this has been a, a really interesting project to follow. Um, as a lot of you probably know, at CES a few weeks ago, Eric, the, the creator of Pebble, announced that they would get shipping in two weeks and held up a finished watch. Uh, but they've really been feeling the heat over the past year, people saying, when's it going to happen, when's it going to happen? And many of the headlines I saw talking about this being available use the word finally. But what's amazing is that he has gone from sharing this idea to having completed and shipped out to his backers in nine months. And he's done that all under the spotlight, all the people watching every one of his moves, and all sharing everything he's doing. There's been this radical transparency to how he's made this thing. And it's something that has really kind of been lost. Um, and it's a, it's a really important, important part of Kickstarter. And that's something we were thinking about um, back in September when uh, we posted a, a blog post called Kickstarter is not a store. Um, that made a lot of waves. And, and really, this post introduced some specific regulations for design and technology projects on Kickstarter. And the underlying idea of this was, let's have people be really transparent about what they're doing. Let's not make this a place that follows the same rules as traditional advertising and marketing where you just promise the world and get people to buy things. Let's, be this, let's have this be a place where people just share their ideas, share what they're doing, show their work, show their process, because ultimately that's when these things are at their best. So we did things like prohibiting photorealistic renderings. Um, I spent a year talking to product designers, people at IDEO, and Frog, and Stanford, and, you know, world-class designers. And a lot of these people would admit to me that they couldn't tell the difference between a rendering and a real photograph, a real object. And that's, that's a problem. That's a problem, especially when you're sharing things with consumers. Um, we also prohibited product simulation, so I couldn't, you know, hold up this bottle of water and say this was powering this entire room. Um, we're trying to set an expectation of just be honest. You know, think about truth and advertising laws, things that ask people to just be straight. Because you're talking to a community of peers. You're not here to maximize and to make as much money as possible. You should be here to share an idea and hopefully bring it to life in the community who wants to be part of it. 